Mr. Speaker, sir, I can tell this house that it is with very great satisfaction that I rise today to reply to the debate. For one thing, the atmosphere of suspicion and prejudice has been removed and secondly, we have begun to think about the problem. Only when we begin to think about the problem, we will be able to arrive at some solution or other but when we do not think about the problem at all then certainly no solution is possible therefore from these two aspects i am really glad that the debate on the floor of the house has been very helpful then i am glad sir that the question of universal education that is every child has got a right to be educated has been recognized but mere recognition will not do that is only posing the problem or understanding the problem we shall also try to arrive at the solution and when we say that we shall arrive at the solution we have to find all the means whether we can do it by financial means or by mobilizing the persons available in the country whatever it is we have to think about the means and see that those means are made available for the purpose of solving the problem. So, in that respect also, we have to arrive at conclusions which would go to solve this problem and I am glad the members have taken a realistic view about these things. Then only we can achieve the ideal to the extent contemplated in the constitution of giving free and compulsory education to all children up to the age of 14. After all, that is only an indication given. We have to take a realistic view and see whether it would be possible to achieve that end. That is why some members have suggested let us at least see that 5 years education is given to everybody. Then let us proceed from that point further. Difficulties have been realized but I am sure we will be able to arrive at some correct solution. If we overcome the difficulties, then correct solution would be possible. When we were talking about the various steps we have to take for that purpose, free midday meals, whether there should be a certain amount of compulsion and all these things. I am sure the committee which this legislature is constituting will go into these problems. Then the all important problem of the teacher's pay has also been touched upon. It is not as if nobody realized the importance of it. But still how are we going to meet this problem because we have agreed that everybody should get universal free and compulsory education. It is also agreed by everybody that the status of teachers should be raised and that they should get a better pay. But how are we going to do it as practical men and as responsible men who have to devise means for these purposes, we will have to find a way also for this purpose. I am glad that aspect has also been brought to the forefront. So also with regard to the teacher pupil ratio, certain members referred to the shift system. As far as I am concerned, I have an open mind on this question even though I am not prepared to say that it is an empty mind. I have got certain views but still I am prepared to be convinced by others. Therefore, we have got to see what methods should be adopted for the purpose of meeting and solving this problem which is urgent and which is necessary to be solved so that every one of our children should get education at the earliest possible moment. As we go on delaying it, we are only adding to the illiterate population more and more and pulling this generation under a handicap. It cannot be solved later on. Therefore, steps will have to be taken urgently and prejudice and other considerations should not come into play and should not deter us from taking the necessary steps for solving this problem. 
I am sure the committee and ultimately the people also would realize that certain steps are inevitable and cannot be avoided if we want to give at least elementary education to all our children. From this point of view, I have no doubt that a correct decision will be arrived at. Sir, I found criticisms with reference to the many points raised in the white paper also. I welcome these criticisms. I welcome these criticisms more than the endorsement of the various points raised in the white paper because it is by criticism alone we will be able to find out the flaws in the various proposals. If everybody says that the minister has brought the proposals and they can be accepted, then there is no necessity to publish them, there is no necessity to invite public opinion and there is no necessity to discuss them on the floor of the house. Therefore, I welcome critics but it should be healthy and constructive. That is all I want. I criticizing we should not descend to the level of imputing unnecessary motives. And by imputing unnecessary motives, nobody promotes the cause for which they stand and the criticism is looked upon with a certain amount of prejudice. After all, we are all human beings. When a criticism is made imputing personal motives, naturally the reaction is, why should I look at the criticism? Therefore, as far as I am concerned, I wish to assure this house and the public and for that matter everybody that I welcome criticisms but let them be healthy and constructive criticisms. We have to take note of all the criticism before we arrive at the conclusion. But simply because a criticism has been made, members should not go under the impression that they have proved that a particular proposal is wrong. They should also be open to conviction when it is pointed out that the proposal itself may be right and that the criticism may be a little bit misconvinced. I would request particularly those members who have come into the committee to consider that even though they might have expressed various viewpoints, they should come with agreed solution.